there's been a, a big scandal in Minnesota around the Jamar Clark case, the police shooting again. There was an occupation for several weeks uh, around the, poli the chief of police office. Around the 4th Precinct. The precinct there in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. Um, what was your position on all that, and where is that case right now? Where does it stand? Well, first of all, um, the shooting of uh, unarmed uh, Jamar Clark uh, in the face is, uh, to me, incredibly suspicious. It raises all kind of problems. Whenever I hear officers say, well, he reached for my gun, I think to myself, based on, you know, 16 years of being a criminal defense lawyer, that that is a very unlikely proposition. Jamar Clark must have known that the only bad thing that was going to happen to him is going to jail. So why would you reach for an officer's gun, which you know will get you executed on the spot, which he was killed right there on the spot. So, so the thing is, is that I doubt that. I do believe that everyone, including police, have the right to a presumption of innocence and they have the right to avail themselves of the normal course. But I do believe that use of the grand jury in this situation is bad. And the reason I oppose it is because it's an opaque system and doesn't have any transparency. So I've written an op-ed arguing that, um, that uh, we needed to, we, that the, the prosecutor should just make a decision about whether to charge or not charge the officers himself and publicly explain his reasons uh, and then take the political heat you know, however, but that uh, to simply run it to the grand jury, get a no bill of indictment, and say, ah, well, the grand jury decided not to indict, nothing we can do, that's just not going to work in this situation. I think it's a bad move. So I'm hoping that the, uh, that the, the county attorney uh, understands the need for real transparency and acts accordingly. The decision has not been made yet, uh, uh, and so we'll see. Uh, I support the uh, occupation of the 4th Precinct. It went on for three weeks. I can assure you, though, that, uh, that the occupation was, was not without its hazards. And uh, there had been a group of domestic terrorists uh, attack the, uh, the, the occupation in the middle of the night. At, right? Shot at, five people were shot. Not just shot at, shot. There, there were other unrelated shootings in the course of the thing. It, the occupation took over the street and there were some senior high rises right there. And those people, because of the occupation, bus routes got had to be rerouted. And I had a lot of seniors tell me that they were worried about this. It's deadly cold in Minnesota. So if you're a senior, you walk out of your high rise right to the street, you can get on the bus. But if, you, but if the bus has been rerouted, then you might have to walk three, four blocks, you know. And then, you know, there was, there's a clinic and then there's the high rise and then the occupation was between the two and a number of seniors told me that they were concerned about walking past there. So that was why you eventually encouraged the occupation yeah. to leave? Well, I, I, I maintain that the protest can, must, and should continue. Mm -hmm. But I did come to the conclusion after three weeks now that, you know, the tra a transition needed to take place. Some of my young friends didn't really appreciate me taking that position. But I've never been one who put my finger in the air to figure out what the political climate you know, that was. I, I did what I, yeah. I made a decision that I, that, that I was concerned about the safety of the protesters, the neighborhood. And uh, some of them told me, look, Keith, we're not afraid of those, those white supremacists who are attacking us. I said, I know you're not afraid. Of course you're not afraid. You're brave and that's why we admire you. But those, but I still don't want the, you to be a sitting duck yeah. for these people. And I also don't want other people to be sitting ducks as they're, as they're, if they're shooting at you and miss, they might hit somebody who is afraid yeah. and went down there to, to non-violently protest. So that's, I came to the conclusion that we, we probably need to transition, but I was still 100% in support of the, of the protests. Think it was a great effort, supported it 100% for about two solid weeks. And then as the calls came in, you know, I, I tried to talk to my <laughs> friends about the need to transition, and uh, they were in favor. Many of them were in favor. A few were not, and uh, they couldn't really make a joint decision. So I said publicly, "I think you should move, but uh, but not stop." Mm -hmm. But you know what? The movement is big enough for us to have different tactical opinions. It's all right. It's okay. Although I do realize that if I was a 17-year-old, 18, 19-year-old, 22-year-old protester, I might sort of have a very strong emotional response if somebody said that, you know, this occupation yeah. needed to transfer its energy toward the grand jury, toward the prosecution of the officer.